So, Penn Jillette came to Indianapolis to promote his book, God No. It was a fun lecture. Of course, someone brought up the issue of libertarianism and humanism, and how could he be both, and he basically said, I'm such a pacifist, I can't condone the government to do something I wouldn't do. Let's stop killing people overseas with money we don't have, get rid of the death penalty, and stop giving corporate bailouts. Then you will probably be able to convince me after that. It was a great answer and people cheered. It was something they could all agree on and wouldn't get to the heart of the matter or anything. Uh, that came later. I had already worked a full day and taught a class and showed up a half hour late to the event, so I'd used up most of my socializing juice for the day. I was very awkward when I went to go get my book signed and me and Archie Fantasies got our picture taken with him. You can tell he really doesn't care for or want to talk to socially awkward people, so he was few on words with me. But he was nice about it as my Aspie flag was flying really high. Uh, after that he invited people to come with him to Steak and Shake, which was pretty awesome. We sat at a table across from his table and spent most of the time in our conversation. It was cool because the waitress had no idea who he was. Then the topic switched to libertarianism and I tried to stay out of it for as long as possible because I didn't want that to be the thing he remembered me for. His big problem was with taxes and he used that same bullshit argument that libertarians use all the freaking time of taxes shouldn't be collected by the point of a gun because I wouldn't use that kind of violence on someone. He believes taxes should be just a big collective voluntary pot that people give if they want to. At a certain point he got distracted and I began bringing up with the people at the other end of the table the issue of charity and the statistics that the lower and middle upper class all on average give less than 1% of their wealth to charity. But the upper upper class, like Bill Gates on average, give a little more than 1% of their income to charity, while the poorest tend to give 6% and the middle class an average of 4% of their income. Therefore, not taking taxes by force was not going to help anybody and the rich would continue to get richer. He completely ignored that and instead just attacked me for why I was attacking Bill Gates, even though I had just used Bill Gates as an example of a certain tax bracket. I see many people on YouTube pull this shit, but seeing a master of misdirection pull it was pretty impressive. He was also being nice about it, unlike most people on YouTube. If he had been anyone else and I could have dominated the conversation, I might have pushed the point a bit better. But I have to stop myself from trying to dominate and let everyone have a go at it, because that's what Ospies do when they're passionate about something. So in the debate about why I hated Bill Gates, I had to tell him I didn't, and he said I wasn't as compassionate as Gates because he looked into my eyes. Funny, George Bush said the same thing about Putin and found him to be a great man. According to him, because I hadn't made billions of dollars and given half of it away, and wasn't curing polio, I wasn't as compassionate. I'm not compassionate, I just went into science, which makes jack shit and money, because without people like me, Gates couldn't have spent the money to find cures. There has to be a lot of people like us, not all can be like him. In a free market, for every winner, there has to be a lot of losers. I told him a lot of that was luck, and he said, oh yes, it's all luck. Hard work, knowledge, creativity, and a lot of luck, which Gates himself admits to being in the right place at the right time. Any study or evidence I tried to show him about neurology, stress, medical effects, health risks, psychology, sociology, and economics was all, well, you can never really know. He loathes and assumes automatic dishonesty from anyone he disagrees with. Al Gore, Hillary, Noam Chomsky, the writer of the book Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell. He is also almost postmodernist, and that's why he's an atheist, even though he's using creationist tactics of why we can't know and let's ignore the science and data I disagree with. I brought up the book Slights of Mind, which Teller happened to help work on, studying the neurology of the human brain with the help of illusionists. He said, Teller believes that shit. I don't think the scientists have the right way of interpreting the data. He pulls the argument from ignorance that because I don't know, no one else does, and therefore the government shouldn't even try. We went through the old shows, and you can clearly see they only listen to science when they agree with it. And they only listen to one side of the argument. I've begun to see a pattern in most libertarians which is more blame shifting than actual solutions. 
He said specifically that pragmatic arguments would not change his mind, just moral ones. Well, I'm sorry, but we're still fucking monkeys, and being idealistic doesn't work because we still have a monkey brain. Even though we've evolved a nice neocortex, we've still got old evolved biases that are counterproductive to society and affect us all as a whole. Here's a moral issue. The switch on the track that could prevent killing five people by killing one person. The majority of society agrees that they would flip the switch because we are evolved with similar concepts of morality. However, we aren't even doing that. We have the data that if we inconvenience the one rich person, the other five will not die as early and will have a much better life. The one person has a ton of money and has enjoyed privilege and his wealth. Whether he earned it legitimately or not is not the issue. People are still dying and living miserable lives if he does nothing. And if he refuses to help after enough trying and pleading or other means, then yes, I'll flip the switch and kill him instead of the others. There are many ways libertarians get around this. They hold the ideal that all life is sacred and it's not up to us to decide if one person is less important than five even though it's statistically likely that more people will be adversely affected if you do nothing. I became a libertarian because Ron Paul convinced me that by doing nothing, the situation would sort itself out and the one rich person would swoop in and save the five poor people, even though studies show that because of their social status, they are more often than not blind to the suffering of the poor and they will not do a damn thing about it. People like Penn say, well, that's just not enough evidence that these five people are going to die. We can only make that judgment after it actually happens. So he constantly sees everything about the economy and many times science as a Schrodinger's cat experiment. So don't bother. So yeah, my first non-official celebrity debate that I wish had not been my first interaction with this guy. I wish I had been a lot less tired and it would have been on some other subject instead. I'm glad he wasn't my hero or anything or I would have taken his accusations a lot harder. I actually expected nothing less from him. As it stands, I'm not going to be arrogant and say he hates me or anything like he does with Al Gore, but if I ever fleet back into his mind of the thousands of people he met, I won't be in the cool kids category. Otherwise, the other discussions were fun, which I didn't participate in as much. I asked if there were some people that were better at seeing through their illusions as I had Asperger's and they found that we never know where to look and it wouldn't take any effort to trick me. He said he noticed that I was actually and said that on stage they don't have that problem because they can't afford to. He was a cool guy though, I mean how many celebrities will go out and eat with their fans? It's kind of funny but after meeting enough mini celebrities the shock of seeing them in person kind of goes away. With meeting Roy Zimmerman, to getting my book signed by Richard Dawkins, seeing some singers in concert up close, and the big YouTube gathering, you learn to adjust for how human they actually are as opposed to things like lighting, camera angles, and makeup that eliminates their physical flaws.